This is about combining even and odd functions. Remember, an even function, the algebraic definition is that f of minus x equals f of x. For example, a constant function satisfies this, or x squared or x fourth. Cosine and secant are even functions. And geometrically, uh, this is a y, the graph is y axis symmetric. It's a mirror symmetry about the y axis. And odd functions are where if I change the input, it changes the sign of the output, but nothing else. It doesn't give me some totally new output, but just a, the same with a different sign. For example, x, x cubed, x fifth, odd powers, that's the reason for the name. Sine, tangent, cosecant, cotangent, all the other four basic trig functions happen to be odd. The geometric interpretation is an origin symmetry. Origin, origin symmetry. And so, for example, one way to think about that is 180 degree rotation. That's what the graph looks like. Okay. So, I propose actually to add one more. Um, one more thing for even functions. I would propose, let's just call those, this is not the standard notation, but let's call them, I agree we can call them plus functions. Because when I put in a minus for x, that comes out as a plus. And odd functions, let's agree we can call those minus functions. Because that's where you've put in a minus and it actually does pop out as a minus. Now remember, most functions are neither. Most functions don't have any symmetry. They, they can be random. Um, and we'll see that again in a minute. But uh, if they do have a symmetry, uh, of one of, there's other symmetries also as well, functions you can have. But these are the simplest ones. And uh, even relates with a plus coming out and odd as a minus coming out. We'll see why I like that terminology in a minute. So I'm going to um, show you something that's a little bit weird. Okay, For numbers, what do we have? We have uh, the product of two even times even, even times even, is going to be equal an even number. The product of even times odd is uh, an even number. And the product of odd times odd is an odd number. Try it out if you don't believe it. It's a pretty basic thing. Um, but here's the weird thing about functions. Um, I claim, let's see, I claim if you have uh, like an odd times an odd function. I claim that's even. Let me give you an example of that. Let's say f of x equals x cubed and g of x equals sine x. And so f of x times g of x is x cubed sine x. Now let's test that for uh, even or oddness. Let's, let's give this a name. Let's give the combination a name just so I don't always have to write f times g. Okay, there's a com combined function. h of minus x, I just, uh, as always, you just plug in minus x and you see what happens. And then you try to work those minus signs out of the parentheses and see what happens. Well, a minus sign comes out of the x cubed and a minus sign comes out of the sign and they cancel. Well, what happens? What kind of function is it when I put in a minus x and I got exactly the same formula as when there was no x? That's h of x. Oops, sorry. That is, that's just terrible. Okay, that's an even function. And so an odd times an odd was an even. That's definitely not true for, that's not the rule for numbers. Okay, so let's take that as, I haven't proved that, but let's take that as something that we've got some evidence for. Odd times odd is even. Hmm. Well, let's check the other ones. What about um, even times odd? Okay, hmm. Let's see, well, let's put it. Let's put it down here. Okay, well, let's just do like x squared sine x. This is gonna be very similar. So I'm gonna just sort of copy it. Okay, I'm gonna change that to an x squared. So the combination is going to be squared. Now that's going to be squared. Ah, oh, what's different? Well, now the minus sign doesn't come out here. Hmm. And so now there is an overall minus sign because the sine x minus sign didn't get canceled. That is minus of what I started with. And that's an odd function. Dang. So again, it's different. Even times odd 
for functions is odd. Okay, again, I've proved it in general, but the general proof is actually really similar to these examples, so I don't think I'm going to bother. Okay, turns out that if you do even times even, um, if you look at an example of that, that actually is still even. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, there's two explanations for it. One is, let's use this alternate terminology. Instead of using odd and even, let's use plus functions and minus functions, or sort of positive and negative. Okay. So when a positive sign comes out or when a negative sign comes out? Well, let's see. Let's do uh, plus times plus, or positive number times positive number. We know that that's equal to positive. So we'd say plus times plus equals plus is plausible. That's exactly what even times even equals even means. Okay, so that makes more sense. And why is that? Let's see. Let's actually do, go, well, let's, let, me, let me write them all out plus times minus. A positive number times a negative number? We know that that's a negative number. Oh, minus. Okay, that's plausible. And what does that say if we translate it into the st standard terminology? That's even times odd is odd. Okay. Minus, a minus function, a function with a minus sign comes out, times minus. Hmm, what would that be if they were numbers? Negative times negative, that's plus. That's positive. Okay. Now there's more of an analogy so here's a better analogy to numbers. That's why I like this terminology as an alternate terminology. Let me show you what's working, what's happening there. Let's go back to like the odd times odd is even and call them e minus functions instead of plus functions. The x cubed was a minus function because a minus sign popped out. The sine x was a minus function because a minus sign popped out. And what did these two minuses do? They killed each other. Two minus signs make a plus sign. So minus times minus sign equals a plus sign. Okay, and so if you want to remember how these guys work, one way to do it is just to use this alternate notation, this alternate terminology of plus functions and minus functions, and then it totally makes sense that minus times minus is plus. Okay, but what if we didn't want to use that? Well, here's the other reason it actually still makes sense. Let's go back to the basic examples of um, where odd and even the terminology comes from. X squared is an even function because it has an even power x cubed is an odd function because it has an odd power. That's why it's called odd and e you're called even and odd. And let's look at what happens. When you multiply two power functions, you don't, add, you don't multiply the powers. You add the powers. And that's x to the fifth. Okay. So that's secretly also what's going on. When you multiply power functions, what you're really doing is adding the powers. So let's compare the rules for multiplying odd even functions to the rules not for multiplying but for adding positive or negative or let's see yeah um, odd even sorry odd and even integers but now we're going to be adding them okay let's see let's see if that gives us some analogy okay well let's see we know the the rules for functions we know that odd times odd is even Strangely enough, we know that odd times even is odd. I'm just rewriting them. And we know that even times even is even. OK, so that's multiplying functions. Adding numbers. Ooh, let's see. Odd plus odd. Ooh, if you add two odd numbers, yeah, you get an even number. OK, so far so good. Odd plus even is an odd number. Aha, and even plus even is an even number. Aha, so there's an analogy as well. So that's another way you can remember this, that if you want to remember the rules for multiplying functions for odd and even, it's the same as the rule for adding numbers, adding integers. And it's because the, the, way, the reason for that terminology was powers and the exponents, when you multiply functions, the exponents add, not multiply. Okay, so that's uh, some rules about multiplying functions. These are really good to know. Um, you can always rederive them by just kind of doing examples like this and thinking about where the minus signs go. But it's nice to know there's some there's some really cool analogies here. Now, what about that? Actually, leads very nicely to what about adding odd and even functions? So far, all we've been doing with the functions is multiplying them. What about adding them together? Okay, well, let's see. What about let's see x squared plus x to the fourth? That is even plus even. Okay, well, let's see. If that's f of x, 
x squared plus x to the fourth. Okay, let's put in minus x. Minus x squared plus minus x to the fourth. They both go away because they're both even powers. And that's f of x. Okay, that's going to be an even function. So it looks like even plus even equals even. It's not a proof, just did an example, but the, the basic idea is the same. If you add two things where the minus signs go away, the minus signs are going to go away. You're just going to get what you started with. That looks pretty reasonable. That's true for functions and for numbers. Okay, Even plus even equals even. What about odd plus odd? If those were numbers, we get an even number. I just, I just pointed out that. But we I also pointed out that that's really more analogous to what happens when you multiply two odd functions. We really shouldn't be confident that this is going to end up being even. So let's do an example. Let's say f of x is x cubed plus x to the fifth. No, let's say sine x, what the heck, just to be different, okay? That's odd plus odd. f of minus x, let's see what happens. Well, minus x cubed plus sine of minus x. Now, a minus sign comes out of both, so that's going to be minus. Now, what can I do? I can factor out that minus sign. Okay, and that's always going to happen. If I have an odd function and an odd function, I'm going to be able to factor out a minus sign out of both, and I'll get a mi an overall minus, which is exactly the condition to be an odd function. Okay, and so it looks like an odd plus odd function is an odd. So that's definitely different from numbers, okay? But it basically just says, if I have two things that are the same kind and I add them, I get the same kind of thing. It's not a weird rule. It's not a, it's not a, a very strange rule, but it is definitely different from adding numbers. Okay. Well, what's the last one? What about odd plus even? Hmm. Let's do an example. f of x equals x cubed plus cosine x. Now, remember, cosine is an even function. Okay, so f of minus x is minus x cubed plus cosine of minus x. Remember, when we test it, we always put the minus sign inside with the x inside parentheses, and then, and only then, do we work to export it. We have to be, do it correctly. Cosine being even, it ate the minus sign. X cubed being odd, it didn't eat the minus sign. And that is not, uh, so this is just not equal to f of x. It's not even. And it's not equal to minus f of x. It's not odd. It's neither. Okay. And so odd plus even is just going to be neither. And that, remember, is the weird thing. The different thing about odd and even functions but versus like integers um, there are functions that are neither even or odd. If you have a, an, an unpleasant mixture, a sum of two different kinds of stuff, it's just not going to have a symmetry. And so that's going to be the, the, the rule for that. So even plus even gives you even. Odd plus odd gives you odd. Odd plus even is neither. And then remember the multiplication rules. Odd times odd is even. Odd times even is odd. And even times even is even. You don't have to memorize these. I want you to be familiar with the fact that there are patterns here um, and they help you, and you, you could, it's very useful to memorize them, but I don't think I'd ever test on whether you just memorize these rules flat out. The main thing is you always need to be able to go back to the definition of how to get it from algebra, and of course also to go back to the meaning of it, y-axis symmetry or origin symmetry. In fact, just to emphasize the geometry a little bit, let's go ahead and, and just graph this guy, like x cubed sine x. That's the product of two odds. It was supposed to be even. Let's go ahead and just graph that real quick and see if that looks like an even function. Remember, if you want to test, if you have a calculator especially, or if you're good at graphing by hand. Okay, we took two odd functions that had the origin symmetry, we took the product, and yeah, indeed, this something is symmetric about the y-axis. We got an even function. And we could test that for all the others, but it would take too much time, so that's it.